Would you be my gastrointestinal doctor? Stick your finger in my proctor. Do, 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 do. Anyways, uh, I have nothing to talk about, so um, I was just thinking about how, like what I do, I consider it political comedy. Okay, now the people at church consider it uh, satanic worship. I call it political comedy. They call it, you know. <sighs> now, I just, I, I don't even know where to talk. I don't even know where to go with any of this because it's like I, I, I hear, I hear what they tell me, and I know what they told me to believe. And then when it comes to politics, all of that goes out the window. And I don't understand why. I don't get that. I don't get their mentality. I don't understand where they're coming from. Because it, it makes no sense to me. It really makes zero sense to me. Because if you say one thing... How, I don't understand how you can say one thing and then go say another thing and pretend that the two completely different things are coherent with one another. I, I just... I mean, I'm trying to understand where a lot of the people from church are coming from. With all this, we love Donald Trump, we love the Republicans, and blah, blah, blah. I think what it comes down to, I don't know, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to understand it, let's put it this way. Now, I see it a certain way. Why they don't see it a certain way is beyond me. Because, <clears throat> well, let me get into this. Um, now, let me start this off right. I will state again for this particular clip... My belief system is very simple. If your political talking points do not line up with what Jesus said, uh, you're full of shit. And I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Yet, for some reason, I'm the one who's fallen away. I'm the bad influence. I'm the one who's being used as a mouthpiece of Satan and all this other bullshit. I'm a libtard. I'm an evil liberal. I'm all this other stuff. <clears throat> okay, fine. Fine. Whatever. But it just... It it does not jive with me. I don't understand how... You can talk about... His kingdom. You can talk about... You know, all this bullshit. And it, it, see, it must be bullshit. Because either they're, they're bullshitting me on Sunday... Or they're bullshitting me the rest of the week. Because you cannot have two opposite ends of an extreme and say they're one the one and the same. They're equal. They're not. Okay. <clears throat> they're not. You you cannot do that. You cannot say that. They're not interchangeable. <sighs> now I think I th this is what I think it is. I think they believe and it's not biblical, by the way, that if, quote-unquote, the libtards, the evil liberals, are de you know, the demonic liberals, if they are used of Satan, then the GOP must be used of, of God, because, I don't know. <laughs> now, nowhere does it say in the Bible that just because one side is evil doesn't, that the other side is just automatically good no matter what. Now, they, <clears throat> they will cite that, quote-unquote, Satan's kingdom will not be divided. So if the liberals are completely evil, then everything else is good. Well, that's stupid. That's stupid. I'm, I'm sorry, that's retarded. That's, that's biblical retardation. There's no truth to that. That's bad doctrine. Because what that does is it sets you up for a... A lot of bullshit. Okay. You know. 
It'd be like saying, okay, sodomy with men is bad, but sodomy with women is okay because it's not with men. Okay, well, if you're a Bible believer, it's still sodomy. No, I don't mind a good piece of ass once in a while myself, but you know what you know what I mean. You can't have one extreme or the other. Now, if you're one of these Donald Trump people, okay, so which Muslim group do you like better? Which Muslim group do you hate worse? Do you hate the Sunnis or do you hate the uh, Shiite? Well, if you're a Donald Trump supporter, they're both Muslim, so pff, it's kind of a that's a tough call. <clears throat> you know, do you hate the blacks or do you hate the Hispanics? Well, pff, shit. <laughs> I mean, again, I'm using your own ignorant logic, you know, if you're a Donald Trump supporter. Who do you hate more, the blacks or the, the Hispanics? The blacks or the browns, basically. I mean, in your eyes, they're all evil. They're all wicked people. They're all foreigners. They're all illegals. They're all this, that, the other, whatever label you want to give them. Well, okay, well... There's different variants of legality, too. I mean, there's the people who, yeah, broke the law, but they're otherwise law-abiding citizens. And then there's the people who broke the law and are raping and killing people. So which one do you hate more? <laughs> you know, it's like, it, that, that doesn't make sense. You can't sit there and say, well, just because the liberals are complete evil in your mind, that the Republicans, because the only other option, have to be of God. That, again, that makes zero freaking sense, and I think that's what it comes down to. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It has to be, because there's no other recourse. There's no other logic. But the problem with that, because it's bad doctrine, it leaves you open to basically make excuses for a lot of bullshit. Now, I'm sorry. Who is more evil, the liberals who want a living wage for people who work? Well, they're doing it at the, at the expense of taxpayers. They're taking taxpayer money and giving it to other people. Or they're going to drive up costs because blah, 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 blah. Okay. That makes them evil? It might make them wrong, but does it make them inherently evil? I don't know if you can go there. I mean, on that one particular topic. Forget, take God out of the schools, all that other stuff. Let's just talk with that one topic. I don't know. I think it's more evil to work people to the bone for next to nothing and then belittle them for being poor. And say, well, you're on food stamps and you're on this and you're on government, you know, assistance. Yeah, well, you know what? You, f you fuckers raised the minimum wage. Maybe I wouldn't be on government assistance, you stupid sons of bitches, you know? I mean, seriously, what's more, what's more evil? What's more evil? And seriously, let's just, let's just forget your right and left. Let's just put it down the middle. Let's talk living wage for a second. Who is more evil? Somebody who wants other people to succeed versus other people who chastise people for not succeeding. Who's more evil there? Which one would Jesus do? Which one? Which side would Jesus be on? Jesus would not be on the side of the Republican on that. He wouldn't. He would not. But again, we have we have born again Christians making excuses for pedophilia and child molestation. Do you understand that? And don't tell me they didn't, because I I heard them. They did. They collectively, they collectively made excuses for. A child predator. They did. They made excuses for Nazis. They, they make excuses for slavery and states' rights and bullshit. They make excuses for, you know, sexual assaults. Are you fucking kidding me? And don't tell me they didn't. They'll even admit they did. They turn a blind eye to Donald Trump's bullshit. Well, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. I'm tired of hearing that. Yeah, nobody's perfect, and yes, God can use anybody. I agree with that. But there comes a point when you as a Christian have to understand that the person you're backing 
has no spiritual backbone. They have no spiritual wherewithal. Okay, somebody sinning and living in sin, hey, you know what? Shit happens. It happens. People people sin, people fall all the time. You know? You pray for your brother, you you hope he gets right. You hope he picks himself up. You you encourage him to pick himself up. The problem is, someone like Donald Trump has no desire to repent. He has no desire to change his heart. Now you say, okay, well look at King David. King David did this, and King David did that, and it was horrible, wicked, awful stuff. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he had a desire to be right with God. Trump has no desire to be right with God. He has never made any indication, verbally or otherwise, that he wants to be, quote-unquote, right with God. He may make a flowery speech about how great God is, and, you know, that's the verse you want to hear, and blah, blah, blah. You know, and here's my my grandmother's Bible, and all this other bullshit. So what? So what? There's nothing there. There's literally no there there. So all these people who are who jump on his bandwagon, who are Christians, I'm sorry, you're you're being swindled. <laughs> you are. You can't tell me otherwise. And I've said from day one, if Trump comes out, admits that he needs Jesus, and has a Christian testimony about needing Jesus. Hey, I need Jesus. I can't raise myself from the dead. I just gave you one. I said I need Jesus. I need Jesus to forgive my sins. Die on the cross for my sins. I need that. I need that. I have just stated that. You will never hear Donald Trump use those words. And you never have. You never have and you never will. And all these people who want to defend him. Because he says little flowery things about, oh, it's good to, it's okay for Christians to, you know, preach what they want. Yeah, it's called the First Amendment, asshole. It's called freedom of speech. Give me a break. He's, he's doing nothing for you. He's basically saying you have the right to freedom of speech. That's it. He's done, he's done nothing for Christians. Not in the sense you guys are acting like he did. I don't know, man. It just pisses me off. Then you got people like Franklin Graham. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'm not as well-versed with Billy Graham as I probably should have been. Or should be. Um, and I, I take it at... I take Billy Graham at other people's words that he was a great man. Um, as in, I can't say for a fact... Because, again, I didn't really listen to his stuff. I didn't really follow him all that much. But I've been listening to some of the stuff his son Franklin is saying. And I'm sorry, the dude is, is worldly. He's wicked. He's evil. This is not of God. Some of the stuff he says is not of God. He's saying stuff that is wicked. And, uh, yeah, there you go. You got Christians every day... Tweeting this is retweeting this shit, retweeting this worldly bullshit. Let's make America great. Yeah, how how far is that gonna get you? Make the world great. Make the world better. That is not of God. That is not of God. It dude, I'm sorry, it just bothers me. Because these people ingrained these ideas into my head, and then I I remember back to what they said. And then I see them just belly slapping and giggling their tits off over stupid shit. Like, oh, Franklin Graham, oh, he's so godly. Trump is, is a godson. No, 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 no. Bullshit. Bullshit. You need to get right with Jesus what you need to do, son. All these freaking people have no clue what they're talking about. They're all into this political bullshit. It's just, I don't get it. I really, for the love of Christ, don't get it. I really, seriously don't get it. Because, how do you distinguish between, this is what Jesus said, versus this is what the GOP talking points are. Because here's a newsflash, Obama's not coming for your guns. You know who's going to come for your guns? Jesus. You know what you're going to do with those guns? You're going to beat them in the plows. Okay, same thing with your swords and bullshit. 
Okay, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You live by the gun, you die by the gun. He's going to he's going to be the one who comes comes down and takes your guns. It isn't going to be Obama. Sick of that bullshit too. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, you wonder why the world turns their weapons to to Christ when he comes back. When he comes back in glory in the clouds and bullshit. You wonder why the world turns their weapons towards the sky. Because he's coming to take your shit. And all these freaking patriotic nimrods sitting there with the flag wrapped around their cocks. Give me a break. And don't even get me started with all the gun bullshit. Don't even get me started with that stuff. Well, if they didn't have guns, they'd find other ways to kill people. Yeah, you know what? There's a difference between stabbing somebody, stabbing maybe six or seven people versus stabbing 20 or 30 people. Okay? There's a difference because you actually have a chance to survive. Maybe not the first two or three people that they stabbed repeatedly 50, 60 times. Okay? But the guy's gonna tire himself out. You know how you know how tired you get by pushing, pulling a little trigger. You don't get tired out very quick. Okay. Now you're sitting there exerting energy, stabbing the bejesus out of somebody. Okay. After about probably the third guy, you're gonna be really tired. Okay. Which means your shit's gonna be put on hold. Okay. That's gonna that's gonna tone your shit down just a little bit. And all these people, well, if we're going to ban guns, we should ban vehicles too. No, we should not ban vehicles. Yes, vehicles can kill other people. Yes, they can, absolutely. The problem is, the vehicle's sole purpose for existence is transportation. What is the, the gun's sole purpose for, for existence? It has no other purpose other than fear and death. Those are the only two things it has well, for protection. By doing what? Fear and death. So don't sit there and say, well, it's not the gun's fault. It's not the innocent gun's fault. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Then why don't we ban people from having guns? Don't ban the gun. Ban the people. It's that simple. Now, I'm sorry. If you're a convicted rapist, you shouldn't, ha you shouldn't be allowed to have guns. If you're a child predator, you should not be allowed to have guns. If you're convicted of anything, you shouldn't be allowed to have guns. We're so worried about somebody voting after they get out of prison that they can't do it, but yet they can go get a fucking gun? Do you realize that you can get a gun after you... In certain places, you can get a gun after being in prison. I think it, I think it depends on what you weren't for, but... I mean, do you realize that you have all these crazy people coming over the... You know, all these people with cantaloupe-sized calves coming across the border. Republicans want to give them guns. Don't tell me they don't. They want to give those people guns. Anybody should have a gun. They want everybody to have a gun. Everybody gets a gun. Give the teachers a gun. Give this one a gun, that one a gun. You're mentally ill. Give them guns. What was one of the first things Trump signed, signed executive order? Doing away with mental health checks for buying a fucking gun. And then they want to sit there and say, well, it's, it's, it's not the gun's fault. It's mentally ill people. Yeah, the, the people that you fucking let have guns, you assholes. You GOP pricks. Don't give me that bullshit. You're part of the fucking problem. Because you take money from the fucking NRA. And then, of course, that logic, they use, they use the, uh, the example of, uh, well, the NRA doesn't give them a lot of money. No, they give them some money. Don't, don't sit there and tell me they don't. Yeah, but it's not a lot of money, so they're not really bought and paid for. They're just, uh... No, they're just manipulated into being fucking assholes. Now, again, I'm not saying take somebody's gun away, but... What does an average citizen need with an AR-15? Or these guns that turn kids into Hamburgs? Seriously, you turn a kid into Hamburg to the point they need a closed casket? Um, shot 9, 10, 15 times? Why do you need that? Why? Why do you need a gun like that? Oh, 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 for the tyrannical government? Seriously? Seriously? You and your hillbilly fuck friends down south waving your Confederate flag, really, you're going to take out the American government. Yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Newsflash, you couldn't even get on the White House fucking lawn with a gun. 
they'll shut your shit down before you even get to the fence. That's a fact. <laughs> Seriously. I used this example the other day. Even if Russia and China teamed up, the, t the two biggest, uh, or two of the bigger uh, countries, militarily, and tried to attack us together f simultaneously, unless they did a, a really serious attack, like, just bombarded the bejesus out of us, we're still, we could still wipe them off, off the face of the planet. We could. So if the two biggest powers together combined couldn't completely destroy us, they could fuck us up, don't get me wrong, but to completely destroy us, if they can't do it, how are you and your hillbilly friends going to do it? I'm going to stand up for the tyranny of the government, man. Tyrannical government, man. Really? You're going to go against tyrannical government? Yeah, yeah, sure. How, well is that gonna, how long is that going to last, you fucking idiot? Yeah, 1777, it was cute. 2018, not so much. You ain't even getting out the front door. You won't even get out the damn front door, and that's a fact. Like I said, they will shut your shit down. Quick. So the whole reason for guns is completely inept now. It is. How is your little, you know, Air, Air 15 going to take out a, a, a stealth bomber? I could bomb you from space. Think about it. They could bomb you from space. You realize that. If, like, if you were a threat to the government, a legitimate threat, if you yourself, they could bomb you. So, again, this tyrannical government bullshit, it, it's no longer... It's cute. It sounds cute for all these hillbilly patriot country music assholes. It sounds cute. Okay, no. No, you're not going very far with that shit. Don't be stupid. Don't be fucking stupid. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I really, I really have no other... Uh, Oh, yeah, some good news. Speaking of fucking biblical bullshit, biblical end-time bullshit, apparently, apparently, and this is on Reuters, apparently, what is it, the Saudis? The Saudis are on board with a uh, peace deal. And they're going to basically strong-arm the Palestinians into accepting said peace deal. Potentially. You realize, no, hear me, peace deal. There will be a Middle East peace deal. Now, even if you're not a Christian, peace deal is not a good idea. It sounds good, oh, peace and, you know, utopia and bullshit. No. No. First off, if you're not a religious person, but you're a Donald Trump supporter, think about this. Muslims want to have peace. Muslims want to give up their bullshit to have peace. You're telling me you're not skeptical of that in any way, shape, matter, form? Exactly. That's all I'm going to say on that. So even if, you, even if you're not a Christian and you're, you're a Donald Trump supporter, <laughs> you, how far do you think that peace deal is going to last? Oh, I don't know, maybe three and a half years, you fucking idiot. I mean, seriously. That, that, dude, that shit's coming. All these people who think, oh, Donald Trump's going to get in peace. Donald Trump ain't going anywhere, dude. I'm telling you right now, that fucker is not going anywhere. What's going to happen, what's going to happen is... They're going to do all the investigations and all this bullshit. People are going to go to jail, so on and so forth. People are going to roll over on each other. They've already done this. And it's going to be, well, there's not significant evidence. There's, there's good likelihood that Trump was involved, but not enough. And then it's going to get swept under the rug. And he's going to be emboldened. Because he's a prick. He's an egomaniac. He's going to be emboldened. And then he's going to go with his little military parade, and he's going to start waging war against the fucking world. I'm telling you right now. And what's going to happen? We're going to have bases in all these other countries that were taken over. Syria, and all these other places. We're going to have, we're going to have military bases there. We have, we have over 800 military bases worldwide. In the countries we're not in, we surround completely.
You understand that? So who can wage war against the beast? Guess what? what? The answer is simple. Uh, brr, nobody. All these people. <sighs> Dude. I don't know, man. All I know is that fucker can't touch me, he can't touch you. Unless God wills it. So he can do whatever he wants to do. He can't do it unless he gets permission from God. And that's all I know. But I'm telling you right now, if there's a potential peace deal, especially in the spring, like April-ish, I think it's coming, dude. I think it's going to be April. I do. I, honest to God, I think it's going to be April. I think you're going to hear more, at least hear more about it. It may not be like, Completely set in stone, but I think you're going to hear a lot more about it in April. I don't know why, I just feel that. And I'm telling you right now, if that happens, I, I, I got to start, start stockpiling toilet paper, dish soap. I got to start stockpiling uh, ramen noodles. I hate ramen noodles, but I don't... <laughs> Dude, I'm going to be, I'm going to be getting like, like, like matches and, you know flashlights and all that bullshit. I don't have money for a fucking uh, generator. But, seriously, that shit happens. You need to buy a fucking generator and you, you need to move the family out here and that's all I'm going to say on that. That's all I'm going to say on that. Because, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, if, if there's a fucking peace deal, I mean, the fucking world's coming to an end. And all these people thinking, oh, there's going to be a rapture. There's going to be a rapture. Dee -dee 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 First off, read the Bible. It does not say there's going to be a rapture seven years before anything. Read Matthew 24. The, dude, it says that all these things are going to come to pass. There's going to be the abomination of desolation, wars and rumors of war, and blah, blah, blah. And then, then, will be called up to be with Jesus. That's at the end of the tribulation, folks. That's not pre-tribulation anything. It's not. You look in any of the verses, it does not say that. Because it's, people have this idea that, oh, well, you know, God loves the church so much, he's just he's not going to let the church go through that. Why? Why? Name me one time in the Bible he pulled people out beforehand. I'm talking seven years beforehand, not like, oh, gee, we're lot and we're running and holy shit, don't look back. Or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and holy shit, he pulled us out before we went into the fire. No, he was in the fire with us. Okay, Noah's, Noah's fuck ark. Guess what? Guess what? He's closing up the doors as his rain starts. He wasn't taken out seven years beforehand. Now... Interesting, interesting scenario about that is he had to build the ark, so he knew beforehand. So the idea that God will provide our needs, well, all well, the Bible says is, you know, those with, the, with ears to hear and eyes to see, this shit starts coming to fruition. We need to start, start stockpiling food and water and all that stuff. <laughs> we just do because... What I mean, well, shit. Look at look at different. Uh, look at Daniel and the the prophecy of the dream, the fat calves and the, uh, the little gaunt calves. You know, the seven year famine, stockpile the food. You know, so on and so forth. So, if that happens, I'm I'm gonna have to start stockpiling shit. You you should definitely think about it too. I mean, first off, it's just good. And even if there is a tribulation rapture. I just heard somebody else mention this on, on YouTube tonight, but it's it's still, you know, correct. Um, even if there is a, a pre-tribulation rapture, anything we got stockpiled, guess what? It'll be here for people who need it. <laughs> because, again, the whole pre-tribulation rapture is just a stupid concept. Because if God took every Christian off the face of the planet then that means the Holy Spirit is gone and there are no Christians. There's no remnant. There's never, never a remnant 
at any time is there never a remnant. So, if the Holy Spirit is takes you know takes us, because you know who rose, who raised Jesus from the dead? It was the Holy Spirit. Well, if we're going to be raised from the dead, that means it's the Holy Spirit doing it, and the Holy Spirit is going to catch us up in heaven with Jesus. So, guess what? The Holy Spirit will be gone from the planet, or at least, at least in the sense of. You know, he'll be with us. He'll be doing work for us, basically, in that moment. So, what, he he just goes, raises us, you know, those of us who died, raises us from the dead, and then catches the rest of us up, and then magically comes back and says, uh, yeah, let me start saving some of these other people. That makes no sense. None. It makes zero freaking sense. What makes more sense is that we are going to stay here, we are going to be here, and we are going to, as the Great Commission said, go into all the world and preach the gospel of Christ. The problem is, you know, it's going to cost us our life. And it says that those who are left will be caught up. It doesn't say that... Again, we have this idea that there's this magic transition period like oh the rapture is just going to randomly happen and da, 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 da. hey hey again if you're lip to god here because i'll tell you right now i hope so i do but i got a bad feeling about it because <sighs> I, like i said in other clips before i mean what's going what's going to happen is you're going to have born again christians who are waiting for for jesus to rapture them and you're going to be thinking, oh, these are the birth pangs, and the birth pangs are getting worse and worse, and the birth pangs, and blah, blah, blah. The next thing you know, the fucker's sitting on the throne in the in the, in the the temple. He comes out and says he's God. And by the way, you now you can't buy or sell anymore, so... <laughs> and what's going to happen? You have no time to prepare. Because, let's be honest, if the rapture happened, the people who were here, they have all the, they have all the information right they would know okay well the temple's here the rapture happened and we have three and a half years to prepare they could stockpile food they could stockpile clothing they could stockpile water they could stockpile all these things with three and a half years what happens if they don't have that warning because if you look at what the bible actually says it says when god comes it'll be just like the days of noah noah where they were giving in marriage, they were eating and drinking. They're basically just a normal day. Just a random day. Now, that is kind of scary to me because, you know, I'm just sitting here having a normal freaking day. So, I'm, you know, God's here, you know. So, and that's his second coming. That's when he, like, comes in the clouds. Okay. <laughs> that's when he's coming in the clouds so even if you believe in like a pre-tribulation rapture which is not biblical I don't see it in the Bible anywhere I don't I don't I don't see it in there you read the text plain as day it does not say that it doesn't it says we will go through these things it says before the, well, first off it says before the rapture that the antichrist will become known and when does he become known? He becomes known when he sits on the throne. I mean, I suppose maybe you can make the argument that when the peace deal happens, he will be made known. But no, I don't know. I don't know about that. Because, I don't know. I mean, you could make the argument, but just because somebody makes a peace deal does not mean that they are the Antichrist. They will be the Antichrist when they sit on the throne. You know, or go into the and go into the holy of holies, basically, and declare themselves God in the temple. That's when you will know. So either way, either way, the peace deal has to either happen first, which is the start of the tribulation, or he he sits in the throne. So either way, the rapture cannot happen until the the tribulation starts. We have this idea it's going to happen, and then the tribulation is going to start. That's not true. That is not what the Bible says. 
again, even best case scenario for a pre-tribulation rapture is going to be after, sometime after, the, uh, the peace deal. Because again, he has to be made known. It says that. I don't understand why people don't understand that. Because all these people... I don't know. Because, Ian, where's that going to leave you? As a Christian, you're like, why has God forsaken me? Where is God? I was, I was following this guy. I was, I don't know, I was following Donald Trump, for example. I was trying to make America great. I was trying to make the world great. I was trying to make this a better place and blah, blah, blah. And I had my little red hat and I was sitting there praising Jesus for this wonderful man, this wonderful Christian man who then basically came and shat all over my fucking face because I'm a freaking idiot. Where does that leave these people? You want to talk about a great falling away? What happens then? Now, personal, I have my own personal belief about the great falling away. Because I think there's, I think there's, I think it's multifaceted. I, th I think the great falling away is going to be multifaceted. I think that if the rapture does not happen pre-trib, that you're going to have the pre-tribs who are just forlorn that he didn't show up and now all of a sudden hell on earth holy shit what the fuck and they're not going to know what to do with themselves because basically god has abandoned them and they're going to have this this crisis of faith i think that's going to be part of it i also think that the quote unquote the great falling away is also going to be part of the remnant those who don't for example follow guys like donald trump and want to make the world great again. I want to make America great again. Okay. People who want to get back to the Bible and actually read what the words say and actually read what Jesus had to say, not what somebody in the freaking GOP political realm has to say about the situation or so worried about tax this and tax that and socialism and blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm more worried about what Jesus had to say. You know, I'm more worried about feeding the 5,000 and all this other stuff than that bullshit. So I think you're going to have a great falling away with that too because I think people are going to fall away from the bullshit Christianity that's propagating the church right now. Because let's be honest, you read the epistles, you read everybody, everybody's letters and shit and Revelation and all these other things, guess what? The church is going to be very lukewarm. This right now is a very lukewarm church. We're following after a guy. You have born-again Christians calling Donald Trump anointed. You know who is anointed? Jesus Christ is anointed. The very word Christ means anointed. So to sit there and say that Donald Trump is anointed, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. Franklin Graham and some of these other sons of bitches, you're full of shit. And I rebuke your bullshit. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, you asshole. <sighs> pisses me off. Absolutely pisses me off. And no, they don't deserve a pre-tribulation rapture. They don't. They deserve to get their nuts kicked in. They do. This church deserves a kick in the dick. They deserve it. And God, I think, is going to give it to them. Well, shit. Name me one time in the Bible he he didn't do it to Israel. Every time Israel wanted a, a bullshit king, he gave it to him and said, "Hey, guess what? Now you're gonna get fucked over. You, I'm gonna give you what you want. You're gonna get fucked." Well, we wanted Donald Trump. We wanted to make America great. We wanted this, that, and the other. Well, good job. Good luck with that. Good freaking luck with that. I hope it serves you well on your road to hell, asshole. Seriously. It's called the straight and narrow. It's not called the wide path. So when you see 81% of evangelicals running towards something, that means there's probably a problem. There's probably a problem, because the remnant will always be there. And if 99% of the freaking church is going off doing stupid shit, there will always be a remnant. And I would much rather be part of the remnant than part of the... The, the, the group think that just goes off and acts stupid. All this dispensational bullshit, all these, these you know, 
18th, 19th century asshole preachers who came up with all this bullshit pre-tribulation rapture that's not in the damn Bible. I'm sorry, it's not. I shouldn't say damn Bible, but you know what I mean. It's like, it, dude, you read the words, it does not say that. Well, Second Thessalonians, no, Second Thessalonians says go fuck yourself, because it's not what that says. Read it. Read the words. Grasp them. It does not say that. You want it to say that. Because it fits your political agenda. It fits your bullshit. Because you have all these freaking Christians who don't give a fuck about anything else because they think they're going to be taken out. They don't care about global climate change. Read Revelation, motherfucker. Read that book. And guess what? If there's no pre-tribulation rapture, you're going to go through that shit. So all your precious, all your your precious, uh, you know, big corporations who can dump toxic shit into water now, and you applaud it, you applaud Donald Trump taking away EPA regulations. Now, I'm not saying every one of them is, is necessary. I'm not saying they're not restrictive in some cases. But to sit there and say, gee, should you have the right to produce smog in big cities? Do you have the right to dump toxic shit in water? Do you have a right to, oh, I don't know, not have fucking standards in your food? They just had a thing with dog food where there's, there's they use meat from animals who are euthanized and the drug is in the fucking food and it's killing animals. It's killing your pets. Because there's no goddamn regulation because we need small government. Yeah, we need small government. We need a government that tells you not to be a fucking idiot. Not to be a stupid son of a bitch. That's what we need, big government. Or any type of government. All these people want to do away with consumer uh, protections because, oh, it's big government. You know, gee, yeah, let, let's put our internet in the hands of big corporations because, yeah, what could go wrong with that? Let's put our, our health in the hands of big corporations who want to make a dollar off of our suffering. Yeah, what could go wrong with that? You know what could go wrong with that, dear Christian? Guess what? <laughs> That's what could go wrong with that. Fuck you. Get right with Jesus. Assholes. Pisses me off. It just straight up pisses me off. Just absolutely angers me. Just, oof. And of course, you can't tell nobody nothing because they know everything. Oh, I've studied the Bible for 40 years. Then you'd know the Bible says that even at our best, we're still far from God, which means you're a fucking idiot. You want to sit there, oh, I've studied it for 40 years. Then you should know that for 40 years, you've been a fucking moron. Okay? Get right with Jesus, you dumb fuck. Now I'm getting pissed. Now I'm getting angry. Now I'm swearing. So fuck you. I'm sorry. People don't like hearing that. I'm sorry. I can't help myself. I get pissed off very easily. <laughs> and what's it for? What are you getting out of it? Ooh, ooh, I'm Kenneth Copeland. I get a jet. I get to fly around in a jet because Jesus wants me to have a jet. No, Jesus wants you to f stop being an asshole. Jesus wants you to go and do the Great Commission. He wants me to do the same, but I'm not out doing it. I'm, I'm just as guilty. But I'm not on a fucking jet flying around like a jackass acting like I'm something special. Okay? Stupid scumbags. Kenneth Copeland is a scumbag. No, don't get me wrong. I think God uses him. I think God has used him. I think God can use anybody. God can use Donald Trump. God can use me. God can use anybody. Still, at the end of the day, it doesn't negate the fact you're a scumbag. And I'm a scumbag, too, so don't get me wrong. But you get my point. You see, people, they're propagating the wrong gospel. They're propagating worldly bullshit. Oh, yeah, let's have a jet. Yeah. Give me a break. No, yeah, granted, you know what? I need a new computer. I want a new computer. I want God to give me a new computer because I can't afford it myself. No, realistically, yeah, I could save up. It might take 10 months. I could save up. No, granted, I want a, I want like a, a $1,000 Mac. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I want a $1,000 Mac. Hey, you know what? I'm a child of God. I want God to give me the best. No, not that that's necessarily the best, but that's what I want. 
You know? Yeah, I could get a $300 piece of trash, sure. I want what I want. Not selfishly, it's just that's what I'm comfortable using. And I want my God to fulfill that. Has he? No. Why? Because I'm not out there swindling people. Say, oh, I need a jet to fly around him because I'm an asshole. I don't know, man. It's tragedy, is what it is. It's a legitimate tragedy. Because people are going to wake up and they're going to be like, "Where's where was Jesus? Where did he go? Where, what happened? Why, why, why did he forsake us? Why is he not here? He didn't come back for the church. Here's the Antichrist. He's taken over the world. And we've been sitting here with our dick in our hand, slapping each other around with it. We've literally been dick smacking each other, and we don't even know, eh, now what do we do? I mean, seriously, you want to talk about the great falling away? Hey. Like I said, I I hope to God there's a, a pre-tribulation rapture. Because guess what, if I'm wrong, boop, I'm gone, who cares? Eh, <laughs> okay. But if I'm, if I'm right... If I'm right, we're all fucked. Okay, you need to understand that. We are screwed. We are legitimately screwed. All these people, oh yeah, Donald Trump, he's so great. Uh, he's fulfilling Bible prophecy. He's he's uh, the reincarnation of, uh, not reincarnation, but the uh, the fulfillment of prophecy of Cyrus. And yay, and, and Kim Clement prophecies, and da 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 You know, seriously, are you kidding me with this shit? And then you sit there and tell me about Bible stuff and about end time prophecy and then, I, I, like, seriously, if you were to make a laundry list of all the things that the Antichrist will be and then compare them to Donald Trump, he literally checks off every single one. He does. I mean, one of the biggest arguments is, well, Donald Trump is a nationalist. He's not, he's not like a uh, globalist. Really? 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 How did Hitler start out? How did Hitler start out? He started out as a nationalist. And what did he try to do? Try to go global. It's the next big step. You start small, you build a base, and then you go out into the world. Just like Christianity. You start at home, you start a church, and then you, you spread the spread the gospel, basically, like a virus almost. You start a you start a home church and then you start a smaller church somewhere else. Same concept. We see it every day in the church. That's how it works. Yet all of a sudden, no, no, that's that's that doesn't work. That doesn't apply. Give me a break. There's going to be a day when when Donald Trump turns on the Christians, and I'm telling you right now, he will be given the ability to make war with the saints. I guarantee you. And if it isn't Trump, it'll be somebody else. So this, all this idea, all these people have this idea that, oh, Donald Trump's so great, he's a great Christian, he's a great Christian. Really? 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 I have more of a Christian testimony than he does. And I say fuck. I say fuck. I said it again. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I say it again. He has no Christian testimony. Which means he has no conviction. If he has no testimony, he has no conviction. I say fuck, but at least I have conviction. But no, people don't want to hear me. People don't want to listen to me. Cause, oh, you said fuck, you said fuck. I can't hear anything else you said because you said fuck, 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 fuck. How dare you say fuck? Oh my god, I'm offended, I'm offended. Why don't you get your fucking head out of your fucking ass and fucking get right with Jesus? How about that? We'll start there. We'll just start there, you stupid ignorant ass. We'll just start there. <sighs> I gotta be. I, I gotta calm down because I don't want to be swearing. I don't want to swear. I understand people get pissy. They don't like it. <sighs> I don't know, man. Because now here's another problem. Here's. A, Here's another interesting fact. The Bible says that if the time, if the times, how does it word? If the time was not cut short, then basically no one would be left alive. 
So here's a question. Is the seven year tribulation the seven year tribulation great tribulation period the cut short time or will the great tribulation be cut short? And what does short entail? Does it mean six months, four months, a year, two years? Because here's an interesting thing. If you're even if you're even if there's a pre tribulation rapture, we're all gone, and then a new flock of Christians come come on board, which is just stupid by the way, but whatever. And because what's in, the reason I say that's stupid is because it started with Jesus. He had twelve disciples. Those disciples, it, again, like a, a like well, not cancer, but like a like a virus. It spread. The twelve went out, and they propagated the gospel. Well, if we're all taken away, who's here to propagate the gospel? There's no Christian left. There's nobody, there's no, you know, ground zero. There's no, uh, there's no patient, uh, patient zero, you know. Who propagates the gospel? So if we're taken out, who's left? They just randomly like, oh, uh, yeah, Granny had a Bible. Let me go read that because things are crazy. Really? That's what you're expecting? Or or people who are like, well, I kind of believe in Jesus, but I never really gave myself to Jesus. Well, blah, blah, blah. Really? That's what you expect? I don't know. That doesn't jive with me, man. That just doesn't sit well with me. But even if they're completely taken out of the picture, I say we're completely taken out of the picture. Then where does that leave us? You got a bunch of quote unquote new Christians who are who don't totally understand the Bible in full trying to stand up against the Antichrist? That makes zero sense to me. I mean think about it. Three and a half years. Now you got people who are who quote unquote study the scripture for forty years and they still don't realize that even at their best they're so far from God. Okay, yeah, now three and a half years, they're just going to magically learn it through osmosis. <sighs> Whatever. But, even if that's all the case, even if that's the case, you can pinpoint, okay, the rapture happened here, boom, and next is going to be the peace covenant, okay, and boom, that starts... Seven years of, of tribulation and great tribulation. Okay, well, you can mark that shit on a calendar. You can say, okay, this is the end of the tribulation. This is the end. No man knows the time, no doubt, but this is the end. <laughs> this is the end. <laughs> this is the end. We marked it on the calendar because it's seven years. Now, maybe there's a little, little leeway, so we'll go maybe three months before, three months after, somewhere in there. Ho, 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 ho. Okay, no man knows the time nor the hour. So if the hour has been cut short for the elect's sake, <laughs> then it may not be seven years. What if it's six and a half years? Because no one's going to realize that. They'd be like, well, we still got another year and a half to go or another six months or... They're not going to be expecting it. No man knows the time nor the hour. They will be giving in marriage and eating and drinking and fucking and whatever else they do. It's just going to be a random normal day like any other day. When he comes. Now think about that. Same thing with the bridegroom. It's like, yeah, they got word he's coming. They don't know when he's showing up. He could be there in ten minutes. He could be there in six months. Because, you know, he's travel time. Who knows? But they know he's on his way. Because, again, if you look at the way that's set up, especially like in the Jewish culture. Essentially, if a man's going to marry a woman, he goes and basically stays with his father and, and he prepares for her, you know, like he gets a house, a car, all that stuff, whatever. He gets himself in order and then when he's ready, he looks at the father and if the father gives the okay, he sends word and he goes and gets the bride. That's how the picture is. So Jesus is like, hey, man, I think I'm ready now. 
you know, I prepared the place for them, and I think I'm ready. And God's going to be like, okay, go get them. No, it could be, again, it could be six months, six years, whatever. It could be any, it, it, there's no time limit between when you get the, the call versus when it happens. Like when, it, when, when you're alerted to the fact that, okay, the bridegroom is coming, you don't know when it's going to be. That's the whole thing with the, the lamps of oil. You need to be ready for when, he's, when he gets here. And those who weren't, they missed out. Same concept. It's the exact same thing. Just because we know when he's going to quote-unquote come back, no man knows the time nor the hour. So what if he came back early? What if the time was cut short? What if, he's only, what if the Antichrist is only given a year on earth? After the tribulation. Think about it. Nobody would be expecting it. Christians wouldn't be expecting it. And we've propagated the fact that it's going to be a seven-year tribulation. So even if we are taken out in the pre-tribulation, all the people who are left are going to, you know, see the shit that we propagated and be like, okay, well, we got seven years. <laughs> well, it ain't seven years. What if it's not? Or what if it's more? Who knows? So, again, if no man knows the time nor the hour of his coming, we're not talking tribulation, we're talking about him coming in the clouds to take out the Antichrist. No man knows when that's going to happen. Not even Jesus himself. And again, it, it comes back to the whole bridegroom thing. So all of a sudden, oh, he's going to come and take away his church, because that's the bridegroom, and... Then he's just going to come back and, you know, he's going to ride down from heaven in horses and shit. That, there's no sense to any of that. First off, I mean, I suppose if you're an atheist, there's no sense to it in general, but especially if you're a Christian, that makes no sense. It's like he, he came and took us away and he's going to bring us back. It's, it's, dude, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. None. It makes no sense. Because, guess what? Here's a news flash. If the pre-tribulation rapture happens, the dead in Christ will rise first. And then the rest of us who are still here will be caught up to heaven. Okay. Fast forward seven years later, all the people who have died... What happens to them? All the people who became Christians and died for the faith, what happens to them during those seven years? Do they get... Is there a second rapture? Now you're saying, oh, there's going to be the pre-tribulation, and then there's going to be the end tribulation, or the end rapture. I mean, it makes no sense. There's, it makes zero sense. There's not two raptures. There's not. Okay, there's one. It's at the end. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We are going to have to go through it. We are going to have to. We have to at least accept the fact that it's a damn good possibility. Just for the simple fact that if it does happen, we we cannot be caught unaware. We cannot be just blindsided by it. We have to acknowledge the fact, what if this happens? What if we've been wrong? What if there's been a great delusion? Some guinea white homo making up stupid freaking bullshit. Okay. About, oh, there's a tribulation and... and no, not the tribulation, but the, the pre-rapture. That only came about, what? Not that long ago. Yet, nobody, nobody before that preached it. Nobody before that believed it. Yet, and all of a sudden, ha <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I mean, think about it. Like, what is Satan? He is, he is a lion prowling about seeking whom he may devour. Now, think about what those words state. Think about what those words mean. He's waiting for you to be unaware, and then he strikes. He's waiting for you to put up a false sense of security. Oh, there will be a pre-tribulation rapture, so I don't have to worry. 
Then boom, right in the dick. Boom, right in the nuts. And we're too stupid to even acknowledge it. We're like, ha oh, ha, GOP. Oh, no, you're full of shit, dude. You're so full of shit. God weeps at you're stupid. I mean, I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to be un unbiblical here. Okay, because I know a lot of people who it's, un it's unbiblical. There's, there's a pre-tribulation rapture. N n again, the Bible does not say that. I studied it. I know what they said. And I remember even then, like I was trying to... When I was going through it in Bible college, I was basically just, okay, this is what they want me to say. And I was reading it, and I'm like, this is not what it says, but this is what they want me to believe. And I wrote an entire paper on it. And I'm going to be honest with you, I kind of feel bad about the fact that I, I, I basically... I, I basically manipulated them. I basically told them what they wanted to hear. I mean, it's not that oh, I just don't believe it. I want to believe it. That's what you don't understand. I want there to be a pre-tribulation rapture. I want to be taken out beforehand. I don't want to go through that shit. I am talking self-preservation here. I <laughs> want there to be a pre-tribulation rapture. I'm just telling you, I don't think there's going to be. It's just, again, when you look at it logically, the way they want you to believe it's going to play out, it doesn't jive. It doesn't register. You take people out, and then, again, what happens to the dead people who die within the seven years? Is there a second rapture? That, because technically Christ would have come three times. He was here originally. He came to rapture us and meet us in the in the air, and then all of a sudden he's going to come in the air. I mean, again, it makes zero zero sense. It just does not work. I mean, even if you even if you took the linearity of time and space out of it and try to say well, well Christ is outside of time so when he he raptures us he's rapturing everybody at once that still doesn't mean it it still doesn't register because like I said there will be dead people so he will technically be raising people from the dead at the rapture and in the future I mean could he do it simultaneously Maybe, but again, that just, it doesn't, from a time perspective, that just, I don't see how that works. It just, it can't work. I mean, even if you're thinking, like, fourth dimensionally here, it it, it doesn't work. Because you're talking about one event outside of time that affects two moments in time. Now, as I stated before... I think the, quote-unquote, the election and the accepting of Christ, I think the accepting of Christ is the physical manifestation of the predestined election from eternity past, where God elected us, and then when we got to a certain point in our lives, we acknowledged it, and it became physical. Like it was a physical acknowledgement of something that happened in the past. Because again, we are presently seated in heavenly places. But I'm not in the heavenly place, you know. So if I'm seated heaven in presently if I'm seated presently in, in heavenly places, then that means that I am currently outside of time, even though I'm physically living through it right now. I haven't reached the end game yet. Once I do, then I'm outside of time, I'm presently seated in heavenly places. Because Again, if that's the case, then every child who's born, how can, how can children be born today if God finished creation on the sixth day? 
that makes no sense. So what I think is that we were, because the Bible says he knew us before we were in the womb. So I think we were alive, conceptually, conscious, at the dawning of the beginning of the universe, or, you know, when he created us, on that day, and we manifest into the time stream at certain points. Now, what we did before we manifest into that, because, again, we're outside of time, so it's technically, uh, it's technically not like, oh, I'm just sitting here waiting for, you know, 1987 or 1964, or, you know, I'm just sitting around. No, you're not, because you're outside of time. There is no time, so you were there, and you're here. So we are in two places simultaneously at the same time. Because, to me, that makes more sense with, you know, Lucifer seeing that we had, that we were sinful, that we were wicked, but God still forgave us. Because think about it. If that's the case, then he sees us heaven, seated in heavenly places with our glory, or, you know, glory that we, you know, that, it's not our glory, I shouldn't say it like that, but we're... From his point of view, we are sitting in our in our glory, basically. In other, in other words, we have been rewarded with you know what we've done, and of course, God gets all the you know the glory at the end. But you know what I mean. So he's looking at us like, okay, I'm I'm better than them, but they are getting rewarded, and I'm not. And then he can look through all the time stream and say, well, he, they did this, they did this, they did this, and I'll look at them. So I think it's a twofer, actually. I think we're in two different places at once. Because, again, once you're outside of time, then time itself, you know, really doesn't matter. You could literally see the beginning of time to the end of time. Because it's what it is. And you don't get old, you don't age. So, you know... I think that is what the problem is. So even if you took all that into consideration, I don't know if you could sit there and tell me that the rapture happens seven years before the tribulation and the dead in Christ will rise and then the dead in Christ at the end will rise as well. Maybe, maybe they rise at both times and then converge at that one moment. Because essentially, I mean, technically, I mean, it could. It could. I'm not saying it is, because I still don't believe it. I It could, from that point of view, because you're talking about the beginning of the seven years and at the end of the seven years, basically, give or take. And they both converge at that moment. Now, technically, the people who are seven years at the end would kind of technically be going back in time, even though Christ would be outside of time at the moment he came to rapture us. So, in other words, we if we were raptured right now this second, we would be raptured with the people who are here, plus the people who are here seven years from now. Which would be kind of weird in and of itself. You, it could kind of work. So that tribulation would be almost like a pocket. Almost like a bubble in time where... I, I, I mean, it could maybe work. But I don't think... I don't think the... I don't think it's that deep, though. I don't think it's that complex. I mean, it could be, but I don't know. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It could work. I mean, it would almost be like, almost be like, almost like some sort of quantum kick in the dick. I mean, that's basically what it is. <sighs> because the way, see, the problem is, it seems more like it should be more simplified. Like, okay, everybody from Adam and Eve, right straight up to, like, right this second when the rapture happens, will be called up. We'll, be, we'll rise first. And then anybody who's left here still alive will then be caught up. But 
just the very fact, the way it's worded, that those who are left will be called up. That really doesn't make any sense. It would make more sense if you're looking at it at the end of the tribulation. Okay, the dead in Christ get, get raised up. And then those who are left, those who hadn't died at that moment, would get called up. See, it makes more sense at the end of the... I don't know. But as I said, it, I mean, it could technically work. If we're being technical about it, it could. because it, Now, that would assume that the rapture is taking place outside of time. That when we're called up to... When we're, when we're called into heaven, or into the sky, whatever, that that is outside of time. Which means that the minute we get called up, our physical bodies cease to exist. Because if they did, then we'd be still in the time stream. So, what if the rapture is not just some cutesy little, oh, Holy Spirit, huh? <laughs> what if it's like some sort of massive nuclear explosion where it's just we cease to exist and boom, we, we're caught up? Because it says we will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Which means our bodies will cease to exist as we're floating up. I mean, it's kind of the word picture. Now think about that. What would change our physical bodies in an instant? <laughs> Nuclear holocaust? <laughs> you know? Now it does say that... See, I don't know. I mean, it does say that the armies of... The Antichrist will then turn their weapons toward Christ as he's coming back, as he's coming down. Um, so what if they nuked the Christians who were left and I don't know. Because you'd basically have to You'd have, you'd basically have to rally everybody together. Let's say, like at Petra or something. Maybe they nuke Petra. Who knows? Because, I mean, the Bible does say that when when this happens, don't even go down into your house and collect your stuff. Don't like if you're in the field, don't even grab your cloak. Just run. <laughs> so, I don't know. That sounds pretty uh sounds pretty scary when you think about it. Because yeah, I mean change in the twinkling of an eye. What what does that mean? Now, okay, it could be a spiritual thing, like our bodies just kinda like dissolve and poof and we're raptured. You know, like Tim LaHaye's type stuff. It it could it could be like that. But I think there's I think there's more to it than that. Now, I don't know how it would work, but, now, I don't know if it's, because, it, I don't know, does it say that God does it, or does it just say that it will happen? Because I don't know if, I don't know if there's a distinction. I don't think there's a distinction between, like, God, twink, God changing our physical body Versus something in the world doing it. Like, again, a nuclear strike. That's actually kind of cool when you think, because, again, when we're raptured, our physical bodies no longer exist. Which is interesting. Because we have this idea that it's like an us versus them in a way, where it's like, those who died first will be called up, and then the rest of us will be... But once we... Then we're in the same boat as they are, so we have no physical body. That's why Christ will have to give us new physical, new phys, uh, new spiritual bodies. So, yeah, we basically die at the rapture. We, we, our physical bodies cease to exist during the rapture. Um, and I don't know how I feel about that, man. I, I really don't know how I feel about that because it's like. I mean, I, I'm like everybody else, you know, I, I, 
And not that I fear death necessarily, but I fear the the longevity of it. I fear the like there's no coming back from it. Like right now, I can get up, I can do whatever I want, I can watch TV, so on and so forth. Once my physical body's gone, I probably won't be doing any of that stuff. I won't be doing any of that stuff, you know? And I kind of like doing that stuff. So it's a catch-22. It's like, I want to do it, but I realize I probably won't want to do it, if that makes sense. So... Again, you take away the physical body, what are you left with? You know? You're left with a consciousness. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. So therefore, we have always existed. We have existed since the t beginning of time. On some level, at least. Now, whether there was an actual consciousness there, or we were created on the... See, I think what happened is that we were created... Well... God said he knew us before we were in the womb, which means he knew Adam and Eve before he created them. Now, they weren't technically in the womb, but they did have, you know, a womb-like structure as he was forming them. So he knew them before they were in the womb, so to speak, before they were formed. So I think our, our consciousness, our energy has always been there. And... The first humans to come into the time stream were Adam and Eve. And of course, they were the first ones to fuck it up. Thanks, by the way. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I don't know. That's it's kind of interesting when you look at that. It's it's very interesting because it's like when we go to sleep, what what happens to our consciousness? Are we communing with God while we sleep and not realize it? You know? Because again, what what is the what is the purpose of spirit and body? The body takes in signals, the body takes in input through the senses, whether it's feeling, seeing, hearing, and that I don't want to say shapes, but that contributes to our consciousness. Like, what I like to do is based upon the surroundings of which I find my existence. So, yeah, I like to play video games. But is it because I like video games or because I'm in pain and I want to focus on something else? Like, nothing. I don't know. If if I wasn't in pain, would I play as many video games? I don't know. I mean, I still would because I do, I do like the... Uh, like, if there's a new Zelda game coming out, I don't give a fuck. I'll, I'll play the hell out of that. But would I play as many? I don't know. I really don't know. But, like, again, what, what happens to us when we, when we go to sleep? Does our consciousness just kind of go into limbo, or do we go off into the universe somewhere? I mean, think about that. You don't know. Because nobody can explain why we dream. Nobody can explain that. Well, in a way, we are not conscious, so therefore our body still wants to take in those impulses. Our brain, specifically, wants to take in those impulses. That's why we dream. That's why we... we that's why it plays over things that have gone on. Like, most people, when they dream, it's some variant of the day's events, or, you know, things that are important to them, or whatever because the brain wants to keep continuously receiving that input well if we're not conscious and you know our eyes are not taking stuff in our ears are not taking stuff in or we can't feel anything well our brain is like well fuck what do i do now so i don't know that's kind of cool when you think about that because again without our consciousness we are nothing we're dead now See, because there's, there's actually two types of, I guess you could say death. I mean, there's actual death where the body itself stops and the consciousness is like, oh shit, now what? And then there's the, when we sleep, the consciousness is like, hey, and goes off and our body's still alive but still wants those inputs. 
So there's two variants of it. So basically when you sleep, you're technically dead. Now you're not physically dead, obviously, but the, the idea is there. You're not conscious. The consciousness is not there. That's why people in a coma, it's like, are they really alive? I mean, their physical bodies are alive, yes. But if their consciousness is, is like, you know, does that mean they actually exist? I mean, yeah, their consciousness exists and their body exists, but they're almost separated. So it's like, what happens? You know? And what happens when the consciousness comes back? It comes back into the body. I don't know, it's, it's really cool when you think about that shit, because... Like, are we, more, we are more than the sum of our parts. I mean, our physical body is one thing, and our consciousness is another. And our, our physical body cannot work without our consciousness, and our consciousness can't receive those kind of inputs without, you know, a physical body. Or can it? I mean, can our, can our spirit, can our being receive input? Because I think that's what hell's going to be like. Your consciousness is going to be like, okay, I'm in, I'm in this lake of fire. I should be hot, okay. So I'm, I'm very, very hot, and I can't control the. It's like there, there's sweat on my brow, but I have no physical brow, so it's like, holy shit, uh, I can't breathe, but I don't have lungs. So it's like your consciousness is going to be aware of the fact that certain things should be a certain way. Like I'm thirsty, but I have no throat. <laughs> you know, so I think it's going to be heightened to the nth degree, where it's like. Holy shit, you know? I mean, it would almost probably be better if you had a physical body burning. Because at least the physical body could stop burning. You know? Where if the soul, the being, is still attached to a body that doesn't exist, then it's still acting like it is, so you literally burn for eternity. And eternity could be literally like one second. Because, again, you're outside of time. <laughs> you know? I mean, think about that. That's, that's deep shit, though. That's some seriously deep shit right there. So if our consciousness is constantly looking for those inputs that it can only get from the body, what happens when we sleep? I don't know. Because, and I've said this, I've talked about this before, but I kind of have this weird, strange idea that, like, all the bullshit, all the just straight up angering bullshit that is my life, <sighs> that somewhere, eternity past, I looked at all the choices and I was like, yeah, let me take that fat son of a bitch. Let me, let me tune my consciousness with that son of a bitch. That, that'll be me. So, like, all the stuff we blame on God, like, oh, you know, my back, and I was born with spina bifida, and how dare you, God, and blah, blah, blah. What if it was me, my consciousness, saying, yeah, I understand the, the, the risks, I understand the, the struggle, but I will, I will endure that. I will, I will go through that myself. I will purposely take on that challenge I could see myself doing that dude I could I could see myself taking on that I could like God like God looked throughout the entire time stream and said okay these are the people who are alive that I'm going to cherry pick and all you souls you can pick one of them kind of a deal I could I could see myself, you know, letting everybody go first, and all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, I'll take this one. <laughs> you know, I won't take the handsome guy who's who's stiffing, you know, hot chicks all day with million dollar bank account. No, I'll take the fat cripple fucking asshole, and you know I'll endure that, and God will bless me for going through all that bullshit. I don't know, man. But I totally could see myself. Oh, dude, I could totally see myself picking that. I could. I could absolutely see myself going through that. <sighs> Maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment, even on the eternal scale. I don't know, man. 
Because what a what a great kick in the dick that would be. Again, we blame God for our troubles. We blame God for our problems. But we ourselves saw the end from the beginning with God, and we're like, yeah, that's the one I want. That's the choice I made. It's like you go in. I mean, seriously, like you go into the pound and you see all these dogs. And you're like, okay, that little son of a bitch right there who's who's standing on his hind legs and he's barking, that's the one I want. Instead of taking the little cute one who's kind of cowering in a corner and not doing anything, it's just all happy, little tails going. Instead of taking the good one, you, you, you take the one that you know is going to be problematic. I could totally see myself doing that. I could totally see myself being that fucking stupid. I <laughs> mean, seriously... Ah, oh, swear to God. <sighs> Anyways, what else is there? You know what? I don't want to talk anymore. I'm tired. I'm tired. Uh, anyways, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to upload this. And I got another clip. I got another uh, vlog coming up. I'm going to post that. Let's see what is it, 11.46? I'll wait until after midnight so I can do the daily thing. Actually, I did two posts in one day. I got this on the actual vlog. Hey, whatever. Whatever, man. Enjoy it. Fuck you.